Beloved of God, praise the Lord. And we always proclaim that our God is good. The one who takes good care of us. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you that we are still the people that you want us in this generation. We pray that you bless us, that our actions, that our words, that everything that we do and say will impact others and that our actions will live on to testify about us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, pray the Lord and welcome that we are continuing with our time together. Scriptures that enable us to live on for another moment. Scriptures that enable us that in everything that we say, that in everything that we do, even when we may not know, others will know, others will see, and there will be testimony told about what we go through. There are certain situations that you meet, and when you brave through them, you never know the person that you're encouraging. You never know the person that you are en enabling. Because you find a situation, you go through it, you find a moment, you sail through it. Someone watching, it, it may not have been written about you, but someone who hears about it, it may be of courage. Now, the biblical personalities that we've been talking about, and we continue with our personality, Daniel. Daniel, I have had a number of engagements with these scriptures. Remember the beginning of it, we mentioned that it's apocalyptic. See, scriptures that talk about things, issues that have happened in the end of time, and they have lived on. Now, we have continued engaging with this portion. We have talked about the life of Daniel. We have talked about the book itself as it stands in the, in the, in the scriptures. We talked about his devotional life. We talked about the three young men, his brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we continue looking at a few things that Daniel's book bring to us. But now the personality himself, about his devotional life, yes, we have shared about it. The man was so prayerful. The man was a fasting man. The man was a trustworthy man. And because of his action, and the action of the three, they were foreigners in Babylon. But because of their outstanding, and the member mentions the excellent spirit that was in Daniel. Because of their outstanding nature, they were visible, they were known, they were promoted to be as great as the other men, the counselors, the satraps that were helping the kings in Babylon. Remember the kings, Nebuchadnezzar is mentioned, Belteshazzar is mentioned, Darius is mentioned. Those are the kings that were ruling, that ruled during those generations. But these people stand out. Daniel stands out because of the excellent spirit that was in him. And now what we come to share about is Daniel outstanding nature. And because of what they were, Daniel and his friends, the world hated them. We read about the three young men that they were maliciously, maliciously accused. And malice is dangerous. Malice is dangerous. Malice kills. And if you have people that are malicious in your midst, in your circles, then things don't go wrong. Don't go well. Things go wrong. Daniel and his three friends maliciously are chosen before their kings. The three young men before Nebuchadnezzar. Now Daniel, we're going to look at him, Daniel, in the den of the lions. And why he was thrown into the den of lions was because of the malice that was harbored by some people in his circles. And so here we look at chapter 6. Chapter 6 talks about Daniel and the lions then. People convinced the king about Daniel's life, how he was prayerful, and how he was trusting the Jewish God. The same thing that happened, that had happened earlier in chapter 3, about the, the three young men. Now this one is the same thing. And I desired to bring it because it has immense great lessons that we can pick as well 
similar though but they ground us they make us stronger in the situation that we can find ourselves now the king signs the decree about this whatever was happening to establish an injunction and sign it and that actually uh, daniel should be dealt with daniel should be thrown into the den of lions and then chapter 6 verse 10 when daniel knew that the document had been signed his death sentence had been signed he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward jerusalem praise the lord he went up the document had been signed his death sentence had been signed so he went up into his house to to pray he got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before the his god as he had done previously this thing did not stop Daniel. That is in verse 10. Did not stop Daniel. The situation that can come, but only propel you to another level. To continue standing stronger, to continue standing firmer in, in your dealings with God. And so, in verse 11, then this man came by agreement and found Daniel making a petition and a plea before his God. Then they came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, O king, this is now the accusation they come now. Oh, king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lands? The king answered and said, The king stands fast. The thing stands fast. And according to the law of the maids and pageants, which cannot be revoked, then the, the men answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. So they are choosing Daniel because of his prayer time. They are choosing Daniel because of his prayer life. They are choosing Daniel because of his fellowship with his God in heaven. Now, then the king, in verse 14, when he heard these words, he was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. Now, comparatively, the other three, the earlier, the three young men, King Nebuchadnezzar became furious, became from rage to fury. Now, this one is Darius, King Darius. He tried to save Daniel. That's the comparison between the two. Nebuchadnezzar became angry, more annoyed, furious. But now this one was distressed. The heart felt bad because Daniel was being accused this way. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then this man came by agreement to the king and said to the king, No, O king, that it is a law of the maids and pageants that cannot be revoked. You see that? Cannot be changed. Then the king commanded Daniel to be brought and was brought and he cast into the den of the lands the king declared to daniel this is listen to this the king declared to daniel may your god whom you serve continually deliver you pray the lord the king pronouncing to daniel may the god whom you serve continually deliver you and the stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. Pray the Lord, the king, feeling for Daniel. No divisions were brought to him and no sleep at all. Then at daybreak, listen. The king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. As he came near the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a, in a tone of anguish. A tone of anguish. The king feeling angry, distressed. In anguish, the king declared, Oh Daniel, to Daniel, Oh Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lands? Verse 21, then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the land, the mouth, the land's mouth, and they have not harmed me because I was found 
blameless before him. Praise the Lord. Can you read the story and finish it? Daniel leaves a mark on me. Daniel leaves a message for you and for me. The thing is, he was a chosen, but not because of anything wrong that I'd done, but was malice, and here he stands out. That the king gets distressed that he wants to help him. So in as much as we struggle by ourselves, there are moments when there are people that God can raise. Even if their voices can be heard, can, cannot, even if their voices cannot be heard, the king had authority, but because of the multitude, because of the mob, Daniel, he signed the death sentence for Daniel. He remained painful, pained in within, but could not do anything because of the mob justice. Now, we learn a lot from this. There are certain things that can happen in society that innocent people can be accused falsely, can suffer falsely, can suffer because of the in bad intents, bad intentions, bad motives of the majority. But thankfully in this passage, Daniel suffered, but the king, the leader overall, was with him. The reason why he could not sleep at night, the reason why he said, may your God whom you serve continually bless you and watch over you, save you from the lands. And so Daniel enters the den of the lands with the blessing of the king. Pray the Lord. And so that one remains something actually that's great to think about and say, yes, if there's someone who can say, may God, may your God save you. May your God save you. And so Daniel did not only survive, but he was found without injury. He was found without scratch. He was found without scar. Not even when he was thrown there. Nothing on him broke. Not even his bone. Now, even when he was there, pray the Lord that actually the lands could not even come any closer. Their mouths shut. Whatever happened to their eyes, whatever happened to their clothes, they, you know, they, are, they, they scratch, they, they bite. But pray the Lord that actually God shut. Daniel testifies and says that the Lord sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lands that I was not hurt. Now, for me, I make a prayer. You can also make a prayer like Daniel did. That there are situations like we have seen before in life that can come our way. We sail through them through the deep valley of the shadow of death. Now, Daniel face to face with the lands, but are not hurt. Now, you face to face with your situation, I pray that you not be hurt in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so that actually, you remain giving a testimony. Now, the situation that God can orchestrate things for his own glory in this way. This is one of the things actually God did for Daniel. One of the things that did, even for the three young men there on the other side that we talked about. So Daniel means, the name, his name means God is my judge. And indeed, God was Daniel's judge. And I also pray that God will be my judge. God will be your judge. There are situations that, are, that come in your life. But may God be your judge and save you. And grant you another opportunity to live for his glory. So Daniel lived face to face with the lands at night. Hungry lands. Hungry lands, but thankfully God, all-powerful God Almighty. It was actually, and I think through, this was Daniel coming out of the den of the lands was life after death. It signifies resurrection, so to say. Don't you think so? Because the man is thrown, the lands have been hungry, and before you read on it, you say that actually the men who brought Daniel, who just Daniel, were thrown in there. But the Bible says that actually before that their bodies could not even reach the ground, the floor, because they were just mold, they were, they, were, they, were, they were broken into pieces before they would even touch the floor. The lions were so hungry and hungry and angry. And so they, they destroyed them. 
And so whatever, like it happened with the three young men, the fire ate up. The people that brought them to be killed. Now even the name of the lands, when you read on this portion, you discover that like, these people were also uh, happy something, something happened to them. Now the Bible talks about people who make holes, they make traps for others, and they end up falling there themselves. Someone may, may make a trap. Someone may make a hole. God knows how he orchestrates things. God knows how he works out things for his own, for his glory and for your sake. Pray the Lord. God working out things for his glory and for your sake. For his glory and for my sake. And Daniel, for God's glory, but for Daniel's sake. Amen. And so this is important. That actually, several characters here in this story talk about Daniel, the godly man, standing out, the hungry, powerful lands, and then the corrupt, jealous kingdom officials who are everywhere. And then supernatural preserver of life, who is God. And so, it's like, people don't like others who are different. Even in our life, people don't like others who are different. Daniel stood out with an excellent spirit in him. But what makes him to be a choose before King Darius? What makes the three young men that we talked about to be a choose before King Nebuchadnezzar? It's because they seemed different and because of the excellent spirit of God was with them. And so it's actually natural to people to maliciously harm others. Now the trouble here is jealous. What jealousy brings, what envy brings, and what malice brings. So I, we appeal to everyone in our generation to consider, to reconsider jealous, envy, malice, these are dangerous things. Of course, there are so many other dangerous things that can happen in life, but in these portions of scripture, this stands out. So, there is nothing that God can't do. And I repeat, there is nothing that God can, can't do for whatever situations, in whatever situation, in whatever reason, in whatever, whatever area, God remains God. Now, even shutting in the mouth of the lands, he was able to shut. Only the impossible can happen with God. Only the impossible can happen with God. And I pray for you and I pray for me that only the impossible happens with God. There are some unbelievable blessings that come. Sometimes you wonder whether you are the one who has survived or not. Daniel must have wondered what could have happened. He looked, must have looked up, he must have looked sideways. He must have wondered, but God had done it. Now, I pray for you that actually, even the situation you emerge, even whichever situation you emerge, whatever time you emerge, whatever den, whatever hall you emerge. We have talked about Jeremiah in the pit, thrown there, but he was helped out. And so may God, when enable this man in the earlier times to be saved the way they were, to also save us, to also save you. So focus on God. Despite the destruction, despite the opposition, opposition can mean, I'm not meaning the opposition of whatever, but these people, someone are opposing you, someone are choosing you, or false, falsely. Friends, I discovered that actually as I tend to the finish, that actually God rewards our faith by saving us from our agonies. Daniel never shied away from confessing and professing his faith, that he went up his room three times a day, kneeling in the open and pleading with God. So I pray for you that actually make your prayer. I also pray for you that keep trusting. And I pray that actually remain standing to tell of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Stay steady fast to keep telling the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And also remember the scripture that says that in the presence of the Lord, there is a fullness of joy. That's Psalm 16 verse 12. In the, full, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Now, may we feel this fullness of joy 
Daniel must have been excited. Daniel must have been excited about him being saved from the mouths of the lions, hungry lions. So strengthen your foundation, first of all. I've mentioned this before. I say it again. It's important that you make first thing. You strengthen your foundation, your faith from the beginning in order to stand firm in the times to come. I know Daniel as a young man, he must have actually been taken as a Hebrew young boy. He must have been taken through the scriptures. He must have read about how God saves his people, how the trust faithful people can be saved, can be delivered by God. And so I pray that actually our young people, our children, should be strengthened at the earliest. So that as they grow up, situations may arise in their lives and those scriptures could be able to help them. I take this very seriously and may God who teaches us these things continue teaching us indeed. So Daniel never showed bitterness. This is another big lesson that I gather from this and I'm ending with it. That Daniel never showed bitterness in the following morning. You see, when the king came and called, Daniel, are you there? Has your God whom you serve continually served you? Has he been able to deliver you? And in verse 21, then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and he saved me. Praise the Lord. Now, what, expect, what answer could you have expected from Daniel? Someone who slept overnight in the den of the lands, who signed the decree, King Darius? Who ordered Daniel to be thrown into the den of the lands? It was the king. Did Daniel know that the king was distressed because he had been accused falsely? Maybe he didn't. Might not have known that actually King Darius was, you know, was struggling within him about the life of Daniel. But he must have heard when the king said, may your God whom you serve faith, I mean faith whom you serve continually keep you. And so in the morning when the king comes, Daniel said, long live O king. Pray the Lord. Now I have picked this as one of the huge lessons from Daniel, not holding grudge. And in James chapter 1 verse, 20, verse 2 to 3, James 1, 2 to 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into all kinds of struggles, funds of deflations. Now this is something that I learned that actually Daniel never bitter, not angry, not blaming, but he was calm. He was calm. So said, O king, my God sent his angel to guide me. Brethren, as I finish this episode, may Daniel's spirit, I pray that actually this is very important because we suffer from accusations and counter accusations. We suffer from blame. We suffer from bitterness. We suffer from envy. We suffer from really many things that we do, many things that we say. But listen to me, Daniel remained calm. I'm praying that actually God gives me the spirit of calmness in the situations. There are moments when you can shout, there are moments that you can change your face, there are moments that when you can change your voice and shout back and hit back. And there are moments when I've seen people actually flexing their muscles, they want to, they fold their shirts, they want to fight. What would have Daniel done if we were coming out? He would have come out with all the wings and said, now God is on my side. He would have fought everybody. He would have, but he calmed down. So friends, I take this as a huge lesson as well in the life of Daniel, that he remained calm, he remained peaceful, and he praised God of heaven. And so I pray for us. I pray for me. I pray for you. That the God the, who gave Daniel that kind of spirit to remain calm, to remain prayerful, to remain forgiving. May he help all of us during our generation that shall live our life meditatively and helping other people to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, remaining calm and living by testimony. So Daniel lives a lot for me. As James has put it, um, 
that actually count it all joy. The moments that come, we struggle, we suffer. But may God who saved Daniel from the den of the lands save you. And may this same God save me. Because many times we're in the den of the lands, but we pray that actually we shall not be eaten, that we shall not be scratched, but we shall emerge victorious. Shall we emerge victorious in the name of God the Father? and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may God bless you and watch over you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen.